All right, so today I want to cover the topic, I hired a DJ, do I need a planner? What does the DJ do and what are the tasks of the planner? How do these two get along and what do they have in common and what do they do that's different? I have a DJ, do I need a planner? And the short answer for me is you don't absolutely need it, but they will make your life 10 times easier when you have a DJ and a really good planner. Now this is just coming from the DJ's perspective. Most of the work that a really good planner is gonna do is gonna be leading up to your wedding um, and also on the day of the wedding. But like once the actual wedding starts, a lot of the tasks are gonna be executed uh, by the DJs if there's any changes or anything. Um, we're gonna be the ones making it on the microphone and communicating it to the rest of your guests. Now, the relationship between a planner can be very harmonic or it can be button heads. For me, it's, it's having a good line of communication so that way we get along great, we know exactly what's going on, I'm not making announcements on the microphone and there's some changes going on. So one of the first questions that I ask when I'm doing a wedding, hey, do you guys have a planner and are they a professional? Because a lot of times I'll get couples, oh yeah, we have a planner, but then it's a family friend. There's nothing wrong with having a family friend as your planner, as long as I know that beforehand, I know there's certain situations situations they don't know how to deal with and I need to take more of a professional role and take the lead on, on certain situations. So it's a little bit different when dealing with a professional versus a family friend. And it's by no means uh, being big headed or condescending. I just got to handle those situations a little bit differently. So when it comes to the events that I execute and what the planner has, uh, we have an online form that I go off of. So anything that's being changed throughout the day um, is going to be on those plans and I'm going to write them down. If the planner and myself have different plans, I like to have them either fill it out or at least take a look at it or the day of bring me a copy of their timeline or fill out the ones that we have because our timeline is about a page long depending on the planners. You know, it could be up, up to 10 pages long, but I want to have clear uh, enunciation and make sure that I know everything that's going to be happening so I can go off that sheet. And so we need to have that good form of communication. So there's a couple big events that happen throughout the day that the planner and the DJ have the most communication. During the ceremony, the planner is going to line everybody up. I'll usually come over there, make sure everybody's in the order that they need to be, find out when the song's going to end, see if I need to start the bridal song when the flower girls are coming down or they might walk down with the bride, uh, communicate with the planner, any changes, how her cue is going to work. So that way, when I start the song, she knows to send the bride if they're hiding around a corner. And so this is one part of the communication that we need to have a lot of. Now, if there's not a planner, I will come over there, line everybody up. You guys practice in your rehearsal, but I'll walk everybody through, hey, this is where I'm going to play the music. I'm going to fade the music down here. This is when you guys are going to walk in. Um, I tell my bride and groom that I'm not going to play their exit song until I see them take footsteps. So these are all forms of communication and we can adjust whether we have a professional wedding planner or we're going to be doing a lot of the preparation to make sure that things flow smoothly. Now, for the grand entrance, uh, this is after you guys are done signing your marriage license, cocktail hour is ending down. The planner will usually go grab you guys and have you guys waiting either outside a building or behind a wall. The planner is going to come up to me and tell me where you guys are. I will go over to you guys and find out who I'm announcing, how I'm going to enunciate you guys properly. Um, anything else that I need to know or any announcements if we're going to do a blessing before dinner. So this is all stuff that I'll communicate with the planner and then I'll go over with you guys right before we do everything so everybody knows exactly what's going on. The other two parts that uh, the planner and myself will have a lot of communication is when it comes to speeches. I'll usually have the planner gather up everybody for the speeches. We'll take them to a certain location. I'll teach them how to speak on the microphone properly. A lot of people like to hold it down here. We make sure they hold it up here so that way everybody can hear them correctly. I'm really, really big on no matter where anybody is at in a room, I want them to be able to hear. So whether it's in the front or the back, they should be able to hear at the same volume level. 
Once the speeches are done, we're going to go into the cutting a cake, and this is where I make sure that the planner has the utensils there, so that way we can go directly from the speeches to the cutting of the cake and right into dances. So if you have a DJ and a planner that are on the same page working as a team, this is where it's really going to show going from the speeches to the cake to dancing, and it's just going to have your whole wedding run smoothly, and that's what people are going to notice. I guess they're not going to notice because there's no mistakes. It's usually the mistakes out of wedding that people really, really notice. And so by having a good team, good communication, we can make sure that this doesn't happen at your guys' wedding.